Hello. Well, today I'm wearing a specific shirt uh, due to the movie I'm going to talk about today, um, which is the 11th installment in the Friday the 13th franchise, as well as the 8th installment in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And that is Freddy vs. Jason. Um, of course, this movie, as I've mentioned in previous uh, videos about this franchise, they have been talking about this happening, hopefully happening, since the 80s. <clears throat> like, around the time, you know, Friday the 13th was sort of really popular. And... Nightmare on Elm Street was really gaining more and more momentum and popularity with horror fans. Uh, they wanted to make this film. Um, and I will all show you the inside uh, now. The alternate cover. Oh, and back. There's, there is the back. And there's the back there. And I actually remember uh, this poster uh, in, uh, yeah, in the uh, theater before this film came out. There's the original. Uh, if you can get it there. Obviously, the lettering was also on the, uh, <laughs> uh, right here, um, oh, and another thing, um, unlike the first ten films, which have special, or new, uh, menus and stuff and discs and whatnot, this is just the normal average Blu-ray disc. So if you got this on its own or got the previous uh, uh, box set of Friday the 13th, this is the same special features, the exact same disc and contents on this. The same with the next film I'll talk about, which is, a, on one hand, the special features are all the same, which is nice. But the fact that they don't have any exclusive stuff on the uh, their individual discs within the actual, you know, uh, within the cases, it's a bit disappointing uh, to me. But that's me. Um, uh, they did the same thing with like the Rob Zombie Halloween films I heard regarding that box set. Um, I never got that box and so I never would know. <laughs> uh, mainly because I got, I had almost all the movies at that point on Blu-ray recently, just like months before they announced the pre-order and announcement of that happening, so interesting timing there. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, uh, you know, I've, uh, Clearly, I've watched this film. Um, the same cover is for the DVD, but there was like really like in blue, from like the disc. And um, this is a fine movie. Um, I rank this somewhere in the middle. Not a terrible film, but not an excellent film either. Um, a lot of cheesy moments. Then again, you know, you've got Freddy Krueger, who of course, talks, unlike Jason, who, you know, doesn't. Most he usually does is grunt or groan if he's hurt. Though I didn't mention in Part 9 uh, how he does talk when he's possessing somebody, but, you know, that's... I don't know. There was a lot I wanted to talk about with that movie. But, yeah, basically since Jason... Jason as a kid, he would talk, yeah. 
as an adult, he just doesn't. He's a, he's a silent killer like Michael Myers. Or Leatherface, really. Well, Leatherface kind of does make noises, but... Yeah, he doesn't really speak. You know, any speaking he may do to, like, who are his family, you know, that's... In scenes you don't really ever see. Um, but, yeah, uh... Freddy vs. Jason. Um, so many people, uh, no doubt, have seen this film. You know, even if they're not a big fan of either franchise, you know, I've heard people said they've seen it. And, uh, yeah, a lot of blood, um, a lot of deaths and killings. And, uh, you know, the whole premise is essentially Freddy needs Jason to go kill for him so he can come back and uh, to the people of Springwood and uh, you know if people don't believe in Freddy anymore then you know he uh, they won't you know um, uh, he has no power because you know Freddy Krueger of course is uh, in dreams or specifically nightmares <laughs> Uh, and he kills teens in their nightmares, and then they die in real life. And so he uh, gets Jason to come back to life, and then, you know, pretends to be his mother to get him back from the dead, and he gets up and uh, uh, heads to Elm Street. Um, Kills a bunch of people. People believe it's Freddy Krueger. However, then there are people like, but he has like a, like goalie, like hockey mask, and a machete, and all this stuff. So that doesn't sound like Freddy Krueger. And they realize who that is, and then they conclude that oh, he's using uh, uh, Jason to go kill uh, for him, so he can get his powers back. And they're also trying to stay awake so they don't sleep, and Freddy kills them. Uh, one of the main characters, you know, he's in a mental asylum. Um, unfortunately, aside from Freddy and Jason, there aren't too many standout characters. You know, none that are really uh, big standouts like in the other uh, entries of each franchise. You know, Nancy Thompson's, you know, in Nightmare on Elm Street, Tommy Jarvis, Friday the 13th. You know, there's just certain characters that, be they one movie or two or three or however many entries they're in, some just are able to leave an impact. Unfortunately, not so much here. But then again, you know, the whole point of this film is to see Freddy and Jason fight. And... You see that happen, and, um, you know, first it's like a, uh, Jason is knocked out, and then he's, because uh, Freddy uh, is able to possess somebody, and then Jason kills them, and Jason's knocked out, and they fight in the dream world, and then he's able to get Jason to become a little boy. And he's also now afraid of water, despite, or he seems to have a fear, despite, regardless of him having one or seeming to have one. You know, previous entries uh, don't support that idea, um, because uh, losing Jason walk into the Crystal Lake, seem to come out of the lake, seeing him. Uh, you know, get out, no problem, uh, after he's been weighed down, and, you know, it just doesn't make much sense here, that he ha has some sort of fear of the water, obviously it's like, you know, he drowned, or, or something, so, you know, okay, but outside of that, uh, and him not being a good swimmer, 
There's really nothing to suggest he's afraid of. Uh, the water, you know, seems like in the time there he's, you know, especially since, you know, he wasn't a, they said he wasn't a strong swimmer. You know, doesn't mean that Jason couldn't swim. He just wasn't as good as others. Um, but, yeah, that whole aspect of the film doesn't make complete since to me and others seems to talk seem to talk about that part amongst others um as mentioned before jason x was the final time kane hodder uh played jason unfortunately you know nobody knows the full story and it's likely we never will you know ken kerzinger uh, comes in to play jason does an alright job. Um, Kane has commented on this film and, you know, wished him the best. And the movie goes on, you know, uh, he felt the film was fine, but he didn't see anything stunt wise that he, he himself couldn't do. He thought, you know, uh, he was hoping that would be part of it. They chose him, this other guy because, you know, he must be able to do something or some things that. Just Kane Hart could just never do. Like, they're just like a stunt so difficult, maybe even so dangerous that even he would have, he would have, like, second thoughts on the whole thing. Like, maybe it might be good to have somebody else do that for me, but he, you know, none of the stunts that were required here didn't really seem to, uh, have Kane Hodder think, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, I think he could, I, could, I think I could have done it, you know, if they asked me. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there's this whole thing with the director, you know, seemed like he kind of wanted somebody a bit bigger than Kane. And I believe, you know, uh, this dude, like Ken Kurzinger, is like um, an inch or two look up and Ken Kurzinger okay. his height is 6'5 Kane Hodder is like 6'3 so 2 inch difference you know most people aren't really going to say much in like Robert England's like 5'10 so you have somebody who's six foot taller than six foot. They're going to tower over him quite a bit. Plus they have Jason wearing like the actor who plays Jason having lifts. So he has like, so he's six five and he'll have like two, three inch lifts, six, seven, six, eight. I mean, Kane Otter was in the same situation, be like, Six, five, six, six. You know, depending on the how how many inches the lifts would be for him. So you know, it's not all that huge of a difference, other than like a couple inch differences uh, height wise. So that doesn't make sense. And apparently, they like Ken Kersinger like looked at towards like Frankenstein for movement with how slow Jason is and sort of the movement and everything. Uh, that he does throughout the film and walking. Um, and, uh, yeah, with, the, you know, with Freddy Krueger, you know, you obviously have Robert England and the sense of humor and aspects of that character are, you know, uh, are, are, they're still there. You know, nothing's really changed. On that aspect, I mean, the, the, the differences with Jason is, of course, with the actor. You know, actors will bring something new to the character, and that's all fine. Um, though, um, you know, of course, seeing Kane Hodder for four films prior, this is going to be quite a difference. Um, uh, whether or that's a 
bad or not is up to the people watching. Um, you know, I don't believe he did a, gave a bad job. Did the best with what he had and with, you know, the director, you know, the directions he was given and the script. And it, even the writers said, you know, there's definitely rewrites that they themselves they can point out what they did right and made it into the film and what didn't. Um, some of the documentaries later on, they pointed out some of the stuff, like some aspects people weren't too happy with, but then they're like, well, they didn't really write that. That was later. So they were sort of, you know, it was out of their hands. They themselves uh, were gone by that point. They were writing other stuff. Um, so, yeah, Damian Shannon and Mark Swift, uh, were the writers of this film. Ronnie Yu directed, uh, this film, and the only thing with horror he was associated with prior was, uh, The Bride of Chucky, which is a more comedic, uh, take on that film, um. But then, you know, there's other stuff like, you know, Ronnie Yu himself, while he did kind of like a, another, had an interest in, you know, uh, with uh, not possibly another actor, he's also said, like, you know, with the studio, you know, here he goes, like, I have no problem if they want Kane. You want Kane? Fine with me. You know, he was never, like, against Kane being in the film. Uh, Sean Cunningham wanted Kane, you know, and there's other things that people have talked about since Sean Cunningham returned and how certain decisions that were made under his uh, say-so, such as Jason Goes to Hell, pe that people were uh, have picked up on and didn't really like certain aspects. That it's clear, like, I guess he contributed to this happening. Though he later said that he himself never told Adam Marcus for the ninth installment to get the hockey mask off of Jason. Like, that's just a lie. I've never said that at all. Um, regardless of where you, your stance on that sort of thing is, he did want, you know, Kane back, because, you know, fans loved Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder did a really good job in the part and the films that he's done as Jason Voorhees. And so he, you know, uh, definitely uh, thought, you know, Kane should be in it. And the directors seem to think that there's no problem with Kane. Uh, uh, and, and then there's the fact that it was a studio, and people don't really know that. And I know I'm talking about sort of aspects of before the film was made and all, but um, that's a big aspect people talk about with this movie, uh, especially Friday the 13th fans. Um, you know, they like they didn't give Kane Hutter a specific reason why he wasn't cast. And then the studio, of course, doubles down. They blame Ronnie Yu. It was his decision, you know. They had no problem with Kane. And then the director says he, while interested in another, potentially a different actor, taller and all, yeah, no problem with Kane. You know, Kane was fine with him. Uh, you know, I think he's made a few comments like he didn't. He he liked Kane, like Kane, has no problem at all with him. So it's one of those things like, where's the truth? Is it somewhere in the middle? It's one side lying. We'll never know. Doesn't seem like Kane knows why he wasn't cast. Ken Kersinger was did a fine job, um, but would have been cool to see Jason Voorhees, uh, played by Kane Hodder, fight Freddy Krueger, who, uh, till that franchise's remake, was played by Robert Englund. That never changed. Um, so yeah, there's all that, um, and also the film was in development hell for a long time. For those who don't know what that is, development hell is uh, particularly with writing. Writing a script that uh, for a movie that's either really eager 
that's been talked about and finally happening in terms of writing um, or maybe even adapting a book. And uh, it just stays in development, uh, constantly being rewritten, brand new versions of a script are made, created, and there's just so many things uh, just lead to the films just not happening for a long time. A big reason for Freddy vs. Jason's uh, obvious uh, uh, sort of stalling uh, for many time for many years um, was the two studios. You know, Paramount owned Friday the Thirteenth, New Line New owned um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, and apparently neither wanted to just own fifty fifty of the profits. You know, they knew they each studio couldn't own a hundred percent, but you know, they each wanted to have more, like. Well, we have, I guess Paramount could be like, we have more movies, so we get more money. Well, well, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street has a lot of fans and is gaining a lot of momentum. You know, don't have as many movies as Friday the 13th, but, you know, a lot of people love Freddy. So, we should have more money. And, you know, instead of having 50% of uh, films gross and or, or profits or Whatever could be done um, with that, no, it just they just couldn't come to an, any kind of agreement. <clears throat> it's not like later on, which is interesting with the next installment. There was some uh, <clears throat> agreement between Paramount and New Line, oddly enough. But yeah, they, they, it just took quite some time for anything to happen. Finally, a script was agreed upon, though, from what the writers said, they then kept tweaking it here and there, and it went off to shoot, and it is, it became a huge financial success. It is the highest grossing in st film in each franchise. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a very good, good, it's a very fine film, you know. Good film, even. Um, I don't know where I would rank it amongst Nightmare on Elm Street, but, you know, as I said with Friday the 13th, it's in the middle for me. It's in the middle somewhere. Um, I just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, I think, to see the history, I guess, uh, of the making of this film just as much as the overall plot itself and the ending you know spoiler to everybody who has never seen it they get to Crystal Lake and more of the friends are killed off and then uh, uh, Jason and Freddy are fighting uh, after Freddy is pulled back into the real world and uh, so uh, Finally, the big fight happens, and they're fighting each other, and uh, uh, everything like leads up to them. The doc, uh, you know, like being knocked around and stuff goofy, also. And on the dock, uh, Jason stabs Freddy. Freddy stabs J uh, Jason and stabs uh, him with the, the his glove down hand in his eyes and everything, and then, like, Jason rips off Freddy's arm while Freddy has Jason's machete and stabs him with it, and then, uh, they're lighting the dock on fire, and there's a lot of gas, and there's a big explosion that happens, and, uh, they think it's all fine and over, and then, you see somebody walking up, and pants and the shoes look the same for both of them, and then it has a machete, so one might think it's, you know, Jason, but nope, it's Freddy, and he has his machete, he's about to, like, kill them, finally, and then Jason comes and stabs Freddy 
uh, with his own hand. Um, also, Freddy cut off Jason's fingers, hence why he got his machete. Uh, and then Jason kind of goes like, Ooh. kind of a dumb moment for Jason, unfortunately. That's another thing they made kind of Jason kind of dumb uh, seems, which is a bit unfortunate, uh, to say the very least. Um, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't like how they kind of made Jason kind of dumb here. I really don't like it. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's, we've seen him being smart before even now undead, and it's just like, they just made him act stupid so Freddy could be real smart, you know, Freddy talks, so I guess on that aspect, you know, you must be smarter, okay, <clears throat> that'd be like if you crossed over Halloween with another horror franchise, like with, like Hellraiser, let's say, oh, Michael Myers is now stupid, because, you know, he doesn't talk, but Pinhead does, so there you go. It'd be like that. It's just, no. Uh, you know, Jason is quite smart. You know, maybe not as smart as Freddy, so he doesn't need to be acting kind of like dumb. Like, you know, it's one thing to, for him to look for a moment. Like, yeah, he doesn't have any, like, fingers, like the tops of his fingers are all. But, you know, he doesn't need to kind of like, ooh. You know, that was, that was a disappointment. Pointing moment, I think, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, so basically, at the and then uh, Jason falls into the lake. Shetty goes to the stabs into the uh, dock. Freddy's too busy looking at his hand and through his own chest, and then the girl takes a machete and cuts off his head, Freddy's head. Then she gives the machete back to Jason as he sinks into the lake. And. Uh, it's all over, you know. Uh, and Jason comes out of the lake, of course, because, you know, he can't really die. He's walking. See, he has his machete, and then he's holding Freddy's head. And uh, his head, you know, his face is frozen. And then we look at Freddy's head, and he looks at the audience and winks, and then you hear him laugh, and then... That's the end of the film. So again, yeah, spoilers for everybody um, who hasn't seen it, but that's it. People have wanted a sequel to this film, uh, like with, you know, with Ash from The Evil Dead. And then again, you know, you've got the Book of the Dead from, that was introduced in Part 9. As I've explained, I wasn't too fond of that. Um, though, who knows, maybe Freddy vs. Jason 2, with fighting... Ash could have been something. People also wanted Freddy vs. Jason vs. Michael. A Halloween crossover. And some wanted also them to fight Pinhead. But then it's like all these other studios would have had the same problem that they had with when Paramount owned uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, so a sequel to this film just never happened. You know, that happens, though. Some films just don't get sequels, either for better or for worse. I don't know. Um, part of me is fine with that, the no sequel. But I guess it'd be interesting to see one uh, in film form. I know there was a comic series called Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. I've never read that series. Uh, so, I don't know. All that it contains, I've seen overall the general gist of what goes on. So I know what happens in a general sense. I don't know every meticulous detail. Don't know all the kills. Um, but I'm assuming Ash, you know, is victorious because it's Ash, and um, I doubt you'd want the real mortal human to just die because if he died. <coughs> in a fight with Freddy and Jason, well, he's probably not, he, he may not come back. I mean, I know there's the Book of the Dead and all, but you know, I don't believe he'd want to be a deadite. Uh, but, you know, 
that's my overall thought. Those are my overall thoughts, I guess, on Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, fine movie. Interesting uh, production history. Um, sequel speculation of who they could have uh, fought next, fought again. Um, and it's interesting to hear on on here and other documentaries about some of the various uh, ideas uh, proposed or thought of for Freddy vs. Jason. Um, yeah. That's really all I have uh, to say for now. Um, so, till next time, uh, I hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend and a great week, and I'll see you all next time.